first, let me just uh, welcome uh, welcome Kirk to the show. Kirk, how are you? Good. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. My pleasure. And um, I, you are so you, you've been writing for a while. You're actually the managing partner of Big Amp Media. Um, you're right. Um, you are a playwright, a journalist, and uh, you you do a whole lot. So one, thank you for joining us over at the Progressive Army and, and writing the articles that you've been writing. Uh, but tell us really quick a little bit something else else about yourself and with regard to your work. Well, I uh, I, um, I do not sure what happened there. Hang on a second for me, Kurt. Journalism, and I also work in fiction and, and playwriting, as you mentioned. Okay, there. And we I go. think an interesting. Okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead, because you broke okay. up for a second, but so, I can hear you um, good now. Yeah. Okay. So I work. Uh, I write both fiction and plays, and I also do freelance journalism. Mm -hmm. And I think a really interesting thing um, is that I actually live in Mexico. I live in southern Mexico. Mm -hmm. So it gives me a really interesting point of view on American foreign policy, living outside of the uh, outside of the borders of the of the country. Mm -hmm. So I write in a lot of Latin American issues. I write on um, issues of migration. I write on uh, issues of human rights. Um, stuff going on in Mexico and other countries. Um, and I write both in English and Spanish. And so actually, there's another article that you wrote most recently um, for the Progressive Army called Mexico and the Great, Great Wall. Uh, so actually, right. let's, let's start there. Tell me about that particular piece, uh, your thesis of the piece and, and the main points that you want to communicate. Sure. Uh, so the idea of that piece is, you know, Trump wants to build this wall, which, according to a Mexican architectural firm, uh, could take up to 16 years and cost $25 billion, mm. uh, besides having to pass through private property, you know, which seized by eminent domain, uh, you know, uh, national parks, uh, indigenous areas, a, a totally unfeasible project. Um, and what I really wanted to point out in that piece is that the United States is very complicit in the very problem it's tried, it's now purporting to solve uh, through NAFTA. Mm -hmm. When uh, NAFTA was passed in 19, uh, when, when Clinton signed it into law in the early 90s, uh, they knew full well what was going to go on, that it was mm -hmm. going to explode immigration, and it, it did. Mm. So actually, um, you know, if you want to trace the immigration problem, you've got to go right back to the Clinton uh, administration. Um, you know, they're full-throated uh, support of NAFTA, right. which led to Mexico losing about two, two million uh, agricultural jobs. Mm -hmm. And then you add, you know, the shredding of the Mexican countryside. You know, how can a Mexican farmer compete against Monsanto? Right. How can a Mexican farmer compete against agribusiness, which is subsidized? Mm. Um, you know, they had to have known this was going to happen. Happen. And then you add to that this awful drug war that's taken place right. for the last 10 years, also supported and helped by the United States, and you've got a situation where, of course, people um, emigrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the main thesis of the piece is that the United States, before they start, you know, stomping around the world, uh, they should start being more Hippocratic rather than hypocritical, and, and at first, do no harm. Mm -hmm. Don't make things worse first. And then you can talk about other things. And uh, and NAFTA was really what uh, what set the whole thing off starting in the 90s. And that's when the Clintons started, the Clinton administration started uh, with Operation Gatekeeper, um, really started to militarize the border. Mm. So it's a Democratic administration that really got this going. And so here we are on this side of the problem and the solution that we're looking for. And it's always striking to me that um, people who complain about uh, illegal immigration always start with a solution that really only treats the symptoms rather than the cause. Right. Uh, and, and as you pointed out, the cause, right. uh, a, a portion right. of the cause right. uh, is is the effects of NAFTA, uh, the effects that that trade has had uh, that trade deal rather has had on both sides of the border. But now we're trying to we're trying to address it with with a wall that clearly is not going to solve the, the actual underlying problem. The other thing I, I found interesting about this conversation about the wall uh, is is the desire of many corporations. And, and we're not necessarily talking about big business, but farmers, sure. you know, farmers in, in California uh, who actually survive off of the cheap labor that they get from uh, undocumented workers, you know, they still ha are going to have a need for low and cheap wage labor. Uh, and so, again, we're trying to address a problem. We're trying to fix a problem without ever addressing the underlying solution. Speak to that for me. Well, I think uh, it's, it's a very important point that you bring up. Um, you know, one... Uh, 
uh, effect of neoliberal neoliberalism, you know, uh, is that uh, third world countries, you know, in quotes, become more dependent on on countries like the United States. So mm -hmm. instead of helping to foster, uh, you know, Mexico's own uh, growth in a in a sustainable way, Mexico over the last thirty years, which has also had thirty years of neoliberal governments, has become more and more and more dependent on the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, Mexico back in the eighties was the fourth largest uh, oil producer in the world. Mm. Uh, and now, as I pointed out in the piece, uh, you know, it has to send its oil up to the states to be refined in American refineries, most of it, and then sold back as gasoline in the states. Mexico now has five days of gasoline uh, left wow. uh, if, uh, if, the spigots were, if the spigots were turned off. Wow. wow. So it creates, a, yeah, uh, you know, um, Juan Villero, who's the Mexican novelist, points out in the piece, this is the state of affairs of Mexico that we're five days away from powerlessness. Uh, that's not a, that's not a recipe for building, uh, you know, right. helping uh, to build a, a partner where people want to stay. People don't want to emigrate, um, you know. They don't do it for fun. Right. Uh, about five thousand people have died crossing the border, um, just with regards to the number of bodies found, and certainly the number has been much higher right. uh, because they now, because of what's already there of the border fence, have to cross through deserts and canyons and much more dangerous parts of the border uh, to get there. Wow. And you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, a lot American both companies and, and farmers have ended on American low wage labor for a long time. So they're you know they're complicit in this. Right. <laughs> they're right. complicit in this in and um, in, in benefiting off of Mexican low wage labor. And American businesses benefit off of dumping products into Mexico like corn. You know. Yeah. Mexico, the civilization that brought corn to the world, is now dependent on U.S. corn. It's it's bizarre.